Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick demonstration on how to go about this initial assignment here. Um, by now, you should have watched our first user videos to familiarize yourself with the software. Um, there's also a couple technique um, assignments for you to complete first as well to really prepare you for this. Um, but this is your opportunity to, yes, introduce yourself to the class, um, but you're also gonna get a little creative and kind of redesign a basic t-shirt um, while getting to practice and familiar, familiarize yourself with some of these tools. So over here, I do have open the assignment on, on the right, and I kind of want to go over some of the most important things to think about while you are redesigning this. First, you will download one of the um, CLO files, the Z project files. You can do male or female, and uh, you should be able to open that directly in CLO, probably by double clicking it. It should go to CLO automatically. If you're having any trouble, um, you can always go to file um, and say open project, because those are project files. Um, so I have the female open one right now. I have a little list of things that you are mandatory that you will be graded on to play around with. So the first is to change the 2D pattern. So over here we have our 2D flat pattern. Obviously in the left, we, it's all sewn up on the 3D avatar. So I really want you to get used to these keyboard shortcuts, have them memorized and practice them. And um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So the first one is A, you hit the letter A on your keyboard and it allows you to select an entire pattern piece. So that can be really handy. Um, Z will select just part of it, actually. So let's say for my redesign, I actually want to make it shorter, kind of like a little crop top. So I can actually just move one point or, oh, I can change the hemline there. Maybe that's part of my design. Um, and you can Im instantly see what's going on on the 3D side, which is neat. I'm gonna hit Edit Undo. I hit Command Z, I'm on a Mac, um, Control Z if you're on a PC. Um, you can click one point or you can hold Shift and pick another point. That way when you move it, more than one um, points are moving at the same time. Another thing you can do is click and drag and any points inside that will be selected. So maybe I actually wanna click and drag over the front and back pattern. And then I can just click and drag, whoopsies, that didn't work. Let me try that one more time. Okay, and then just kinda move it up, oh. I'm not having very good luck. Okay, well, let me try again. I'm gonna hold shift and just grab both of them. And then I'm just gonna move it up. For some reason, it's not letting me do both at the same time. I think because I'm recording and doing demonstration, but you can do both at the same time. So I'm not sure where I'm going wrong there. Um, but anyway, so I made it shorter here. That's part of my design. Um, you know, maybe I wanna make it a little bit more boxy fit so I can grab this point. Oopsies, it doesn't like that. I'm gonna zoom out, zoom in. So um, another thing you wanna get used to is zooming in and out um, with your mouse as well. Please tell me you have a mouse. Do not try to attempt this without a mouse. Um, okay, so I'm zooming in. I see I have like um, a handlebar here that I can kind of reshape my curve point. So I'll do that. And you know, maybe I don't even need this extra point either because I'm gonna make it boxy. I don't need it to like go in like an hourglass. So I'm just gonna hit delete and it deleted that point. I'm gonna take this point and bring it out so I can make it boxy, kind of like what I was talking about. I'll go on the other side, hit delete. I'm gonna pan, definitely get used to panning. Um, I panned um, the way my user settings are set up. I just push my mouse scroll wheel, but check your user settings and definitely figure out how to pan. It's very helpful. Okay, so I made some changes to make it a little boxy. Um, now, the next thing is though, um, I'm gonna kind of jump down to where it says change the line length to true up matching seam lines are sewn together. Truing up is a common term you'll hear in the fashion industry when it comes to pattern drafting. It just means anything that's supposed to be sewn together, like this is my front pattern piece, I hit the letter A, this is the front pattern piece, it's gonna get sewn to the back at the shoulder seam as well as the side seams. So they need to be the same length. And if I hit the letter Z, I can select just the shoulder length. And look how it says even how long it is. It says it's 4.745 inches. Well, I sure hope this one's also 4.745. It's, oh, it's a little off, look at that. But it's it's close enough, honestly. Um, you can round to the second or the hundredth, nearest hundredth, so it's fine. Um, but I did play around the side seam, so I have a feeling they're probably not the same anymore. So I'm gonna click this side seam. It says it's 10.899. This is not 10.899, this is smaller. So I need to make them the same length. So another thing to kind of play around with is you can right click it 
and you can say change length. And so I'm just gonna change it to 10.5. But here's the thing, is that how will it change? Um, in this case, it made it longer by uh, dropping the hem longer. If I change this drop down menu in direction, now it's making it longer by making the armhole kind of smaller. You know what I mean? It, so, so you want to be mindful about where are you adding or taking away length um, by the direction. So I know it's day one. This is a lot, but um, you'll definitely be using this a lot throughout the semester. And I think the more you do it, it'll start making more sense. Um, so I'm going to say, OK, I'm also going to change this to be 10 and a half as well. It's 10.5. And I want to make it, um, yeah, at the hem. Change it there. OK. Cool, so now they're both 10 and a half, which is good. Now I only had to do it on one side because this particular pattern um, has been set to be symmetrical, so any changes I make on one side will happen to the other side automatically. Um, my sewing's all messed up now. Well, I mean, my sewing's still there, but my 3D garment looks all messed up because I made all these changes. So what I'm gonna do is simulate to see how my new changes will be applied. Um, when beginners first start, they see this simulate button, but really what you should do is hit the space bar on your keyboard. That's what I just did right now. Um, and then to when you're done, you can hit space bar again, and then you're not in simulation mode anymore. Um, this was a tip that I was told from the people who work at Clo and also students as well. You have a little bit more control. Sometimes some computers that have a delay or a lag or a little bit slow, when you hit simulate, it doesn't happen right away. It kind of like, I don't want to say it freezes up, but, um, but just the space bar just seems to work so much better. Okay, so I am in simulation mode. That means that gravity has been applied. All the sewing stuff has been applied. It's like not frozen. So I'm kind of just playing around with it. It's kind of neat. You have like this little hand where you can like, move it around um, and then when I'm done I'm gonna hit spacebar again so it's like back in frozen mode um, cool so this is such a fun little boxy look uh, maybe I want to play with it more maybe I want to crop it more I'm not sure maybe I want to change the sleeves another thing I want to show you is at the neckline um, we do have some curve keyboard shortcuts so the letter C can change a curve you just click and drag and so I can kind of make it um, a different you know shape um, another really cool tool to control curve, which you'll use throughout this semester, I think to start with, people love just hitting the letter C. But later on, you're gonna want just a little more control, and so you'll probably end up liking the smooth curve tool a little bit more. Um, so I'll just demo it right now. So I'm just gonna click, so I wanna change this curve. So I'll click the first part where I wanna start, and I'll click to where I want it to end. And then it's it's saying, well, what line do you want to change? Do you wanna change this blue line? Which obviously, no, I don't, but the computer apparently doesn't know. I obviously wanna change the neckline. So um, when I hover over the neckline, it's blue, so that, that would be to select it. And it's neat because it tells you here too, do you see the little instructions? It says select the side that will replace the reference line. This is the reference line. So I'm gonna click here, click. Okay, so now it says click and drag the reference line to convert it to a curve. So I can grab in different spots, you know? Um, see how it like changes the curve just by like where I'm grabbing it, right? Um, and so that way you can kind of just really make a nice shape. I don't even know what crazy shape. I don't know, maybe this look is in, I'm not sure. Um, the only trouble is now I have to go in and true up this neckband. But because it's also <laughs> depends how I don't know how much how long how much time you have to work on this, um, you can definitely go in and just change the length of your neckband. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Or if you're really struggling, you know, you can always just redesign it by deleting the neckband, possibly. Okay, I'm gonna hit spacebar and see what that looks like. So this is my new design that I have going on here. Um, but I want you to have fun with this, and I just want you to kind of practice using these basic, basic selection tools to moving around, panning, zooming tools. Um, same with the avatar. Also, um, you'll you know sometimes people get lost. Oh my gosh, they'll like go into outer space. I don't even know how it happens, but they will just like go somewhere, and they're like, where the heck am I? Ah, and they don't know. So. Um, they'll get lost. So it's really great to know about the keyboard shortcuts, the numbers. If I hit the number two, automatically brings me to the front view, four is the side, six, eight. Actually, you can do all the numbers. Um, so yeah, so that's definitely want to practice with. Um, the next thing I want to go over is um, in this assignment, I am going to have you change the fabric as well. Um, so you'll go to the library 
And right now it's just on, actually I'm gonna open up the object browser as well. And you know what, I guess I will make my screen a little bit bigger so we can see this. Okay, so when I click object browser, oh, there we go. Um, right now it's just doing a default fabric for designing, but it's not really applying any specific fabric properties. So we're gonna change that to a specific fabric. So it comes with a library of fabrics, that's what we'll use today. Um, so go ahead and just double click on fabric. And if you're not seeing all the fabrics here, you might have to download them. If you click this little button, um, it can just download it from the cloud. There might be like a blue N or something if you see that. That might happen throughout the semester. Sometimes, especially my computer, I don't have a lot of storage on it. So it'll like kind of delete files that we don't need. And, but then I can always re-download them. It's sort of weird, but look for those blue dots if that happens to you. Okay, so anyways, I'm in the fabric library. Look at all these fabrics I can choose. I mean, I probably just want some kind of jersey, so I could just type, you know, jersey. And let's see what choices we have here. Mm, search, just a little search guy. Oh, did that not work? Oh, I think I hit it too many times. Let me try it one more time. There we are. So here's some different jerseys. Um, a knit jersey is probably great. So I'm just gonna click it and put it on top of the default fabric. Let's see if that works. Okay, ooh, actually that is not what I want, sorry. I want the file that's .z fabric. So I actually only had one file that came up. It's a knit silk jerk jersey. Ooh, it's not even cotton. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag that up here. So just notice it says .z fabric. All this other stuff, that's not what we want. Um, Okay, so now I can um, simulate, and it might drape a little bit different because I put a new fabric. You can also get creative and just say, you know, I think like um, terry fabric would be neat. Um, so you can click and drag that and try that instead. Um, it'll just be like a little more stiff. You can kind of see how now all of a sudden, see how it like drapes a little bit differently because terry fabric's kind of like towel. It's not as like flowy as silk um, knit jersey is. You can get crazy, maybe do some fox fur. Um, fur though, you're not gonna really see that furry stuff in this box. You won't see it unless you officially render it. So sometimes students have questions about that. It's just to save um, memory so that we can kind of work on design here. I will talk about rendering later in this class. Um, but anyways, yeah, play around. Once you do settle on a fabric, um, you are gonna change the color of that fabric and how to do that. So you wanna make sure you do have the property editor open. Um, a lot of times it's hidden on the tabs to the side and click on the fabric. So you're not gonna click on the pattern piece. So you notice when I click on the pattern piece, um, different tools come up in the property editor. You wanna make sure you're clicking on the fabric and you'll see different tools come up. This is a very clow thing. You'll get used to it, hopefully. Even the avatar, if I were to click on the avatar, um, the property editor changes to tools relating to the avatar. So in this case, I wanna change the color of the fabric. So I gotta click on the fabric, and then my property editor will follow up. I'm gonna get a simulation mode. I notice my computer's going a little slow, and it's probably because I'm in simulation mode. So I'll hit spacebar so I'm not in it anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and close the library so I have a little more screen to work with. Okay, so I clicked my fabric. I got my fabric property editor window open, and I'm gonna look for color. So I'm gonna scroll down. There it is, color. Right now it has no color. So I'm gonna click this white little square, and it takes me to this window. They have like just different, you know, automatic colors. If you actually know the number of the color, maybe you work in Illustrator or Photoshop, you could type in the specific number. Um, they even have Pantone numbers as well, too, if you guys work with Pantone books. Um, anyways, you can change it to any color you feel like. And um, when you're done, just say, you can say apply, you can say done, voila, now your fabric is a new color. Um, okay, okay, I'm gonna close that up. And let me see if I'm missing anything else. I think that might be the end of my demonstration. Um, yeah, so anyways, when you're done, well, let's do a screenshot to go ahead and share this with the class. Be sure to read about how to turn in your project too. It's very important you embed the images in the discussion board post so that everyone in the class can see them without having to download an attachment. Do not want to add attachments. So, um, so get a screenshot of it. On my computer, um, I'm on a Mac, I can do a screenshot just by hitting Command Shift 4 and then um, I just click and drag and it takes a picture and it saves it on my desktop. 
If you're on a PC, there's a snippet tool. If you go to search at the bottom and type in snip, you'll see it, it'll come up, snippet. That's a great way to do a screenshot as well. Um, but I wanna do a screenshot so that I can see your whole working space, the, um, the 3D girl and the uh, 2D pattern. I wanna see what the, your pattern shapes look like. Um, for those of you guys that are curious about rendering, um, you know, it's not mandatory for this, but there is a render button and you go to render and you click one time here and then, um, and it's kind of a whole lesson. I think we actually talk about it later in the course. Um, and it's gonna render whatever your view is here. So, you know, maybe you don't actually want her bottom half because there's nothing there. So you can always zoom in, pan, um, and you can kind of see the little preview picture you're getting. I can right click to kind of rotate her. And let's see here. Um, you'll wanna fill in this info, first info here. Oh, you need, sorry object browser, property editor open. Um, the first little settings thing is if you're gonna save an image or a video, in this case would be an image, you have different sizes to pick from. Um, background color, I always, re rendering takes so long that I don't like to render the background. I like to just have a clear background and I can always add a background in Photoshop or some other application that's not Clo. Um, so I usually turn my transparency on so it's transparent, then it'll save it as a PNG file and it won't render the background, which is kind of nice. Um, you can give it a name as well. This is where you say do the name. It can be the same project name. You can give it a different name. Where you're gonna save it, you would hit click this little edit thing and a window will probably pop up to, um, oh here, no, file path right here, this one. Um, this is where you're gonna save it. So maybe you're saving on your desktop or you have a special folder, whatever it is, but you would say open and yeah, and then we have other camera settings, we have lighting settings, we have quality settings, so much to play around with. Um, but when you're done, you hit stop, and then you hit play. And then sometimes it takes like 20 minutes to render the image. It just kind of depends what your settings were. Um, yeah, you can see right my, now mine's building the hair. I'm at 10%, 11%, so mine's going pretty fast. Uh, I think my settings are pretty low though. So. Um, so it just for your own sake, if you wanted to render a video, especially those of you guys that are playing around with fur, it's kind of fun to see the actual rendering. But for this assignment, you do not need to do that. I just wanna see a screenshot so I can also see your 2D pattern. Um, okay, anyways, that's the end of this demonstration. Reach out if you guys have questions and looking forward to seeing how this goes.